everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful Tiger Lily Summer Cow. This is just a lightweight, easy going, easy to crochet piece. We've used a fun stitch that utilizes lots of chains and single crochets, so very basic stitches that we've used to create this really pretty, drapey, open texture. And then I finished it off with some wooden buttons to close the cowl. And we are using these spaces in between our stitches as buttonholes. So it's very customizable to wear. You can wear it all different ways. And we're using a kind of warm weather yarn that's lighter weight and um, has a nice drape. And it's a fun tweed with some really pretty colors throughout. So let's get started. The finished cowl has a circumference of about 26 inches and a, uh, a width of 5 inches. And these buttons I've used here are 1 inch wide buttons. However, um, I'm going to be talking about the stitch multiple later on in this video if you'd like to make your cowl a little bit wider um, or taller actually when you're wearing it. And to make it have a larger or smaller circumference, you simply just work more or less rows. Also, I wanted to mention as a side note, these buttons that I've used, you can be fairly flexible. They don't necessarily have to be one inch buttons because we're using these spaces here where we, uh, in between our stitches, um, you can really use larger buttons if you like. Just kind of test them out before you sew them on just to make sure. If you use a button that's too small for this project, the button is just gonna kind of fall, fall through and, and not be as effective in holding the cow together. For this project, you'll need a 5mm H crochet hook, a tapestry needle, two buttons of your choice, a pair of scissors, and your yarn. I'm going to be using a yarn called Tatami Tweed by Kramer Yarns. This is the DK weight, and if you'd like to substitute yarn, just look for something that either recommends the 5mm hook or uh, something in a DK weight. So let's get started. We're going to begin with our starting chain. Our cow will be crocheted in a long rectangle, and then we're going to be adding the buttons later, and then you can use the decorative holes. Uh, they can double up as buttonholes. So our starting chain is 22. So our cow has a multiple of 4 plus 2, so if you want to increase the width or decrease the width, just work in a multiple of 4 plus 2. And if you're unfamiliar with multiples, uh, you would just be doing 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 until you get about the width that you want, and then just add two more chains onto that, so 4 plus 2. Okay, so let's put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Next, we're going to make our starting chain. Like I mentioned before, it's 22. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around your hook and bring it through the loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21 and 22. Okay, so our starting chain will look like this. And you want to keep it a little bit loose, not too loose, but fairly loose because um, it'll kind of draw in the bottom of your work if it's too tight. If you're having trouble with that, just go up a hook size just to make the starting chain, and you can always switch back later with your regular hook for the rest of the project. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit more yarn out of here. And then we're going to begin row one. So what we're going to do is in the second chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. We're going to count one, two. So in that second chain from the hook, we're going to work a single crochet. So insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, and bring it through both loops. Then work a single crochet in each chain all the way across. So insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. We're just going to work a single crochet in each chain all the way across. This is going to give us a nice uh, kind of solid edge on our project. It'll make it look a little bit more finished. Okay, so I'm just working single crochets all the way across. Okay. 
And this project, I'm using a tweed that has some colorful flecks in it, but this project would look equally pretty in a solid or even a variegated yarn or something that's more tonal because the stitches are very simple and repetitive. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more yarn. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end here. I'm just gonna work a single crochet also in that very last chain. Okay, so row one will look like this. You can see about the width that we're after also. Okay, so row two. What we're gonna do for row two is begin this kind of parallel um, fabric that we'll be creating, all these little parallels. Okay, so chain one and turn to move on to row two, okay? So for this row, what we're gonna do is this first single crochet here, we're going to single crochet in that first stitch. Then we're going to chain four. One, whoops, my yarn split a little bit. Let me back up a little. Okay, so single crochet in that first stitch. There we go. Then chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then we're gonna skip the next three single crochets. So just look for those little loops at the top. So one, two, three. So skip the next three, and then you'll work a single crochet in the one after that. Okay? So we have this like little open loop here with this line that goes across, and we're gonna be kind of stacking those as we go. Okay, so next we're gonna be repeating this all the way across. So chain four, one, two, three, and four. Skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, in the stitch after that, work a single crochet. Okay, chain four. One, two, three, four. Skip the next three, one, two, three, in the stitch after that, work a single crochet. Just like that, so you're starting to get a couple more of these parallel lines that we'll be creating. Okay, next, chain four, one, two, three, four. Skip the next three, one, two, three. In the stitch after that, work a single crochet. Very easy to do. Okay, so then we only have a few stitches left, so what we're gonna do is do the same thing, one, two, three, four, count three, and then in that last stitch, work a single crochet to finish off the row, okay? So it's gonna look kinda like this. We're getting some nice decorative holes, and that makes it a nice warm weather piece. Um, and if you wanna wear this in the warmer weather, look for something, I'm, gonna, I'm using a cotton acrylic blend. Look for something that's a little bit more lightweight, like cotton or linen and would be nice. Okay, so let's move on to row so let's three. Chain one, same thing we did before, and turn. Next, we're going to this first single crochet from the previous row, we're going to work a single crochet right into that. So after a certain point, you won't need to um, look at the pattern or read the pattern, you can just look for the stitches within your work. It'll kind of show you where to go. Okay, so next we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna skip over that loop from the previous row and in that that single crochet we did in the previous row here, see how it's connecting the two loops? Work a single crochet right into that. Just like that. Okay, chain four. One, two, three, four. Let me get this yarn out of the way. Skip over this big loop we created in the previous row and work a single crochet right into that single crochet from the previous row. Chain four. Three, four, skip over that big loop, and then put a single crochet into the single crochet stitch from the previous row. Okay, whoops. So you can start to see what it's looking like. Looks very cute. Okay, so chain four. One, two, three, four. And locate that single crochet from the previous row. Work a single crochet right into that, and chain four three, four, and then work a single crochet right there in the end. Okay, 
So it'll look kind of like that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be repeating row three over and over and over until you get the length that you want or you're starting to run out of yarn. And um, so I'm gonna keep going with row three and then we're gonna rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to finish up your cowl. So again, a transition, we're just gonna be repeating row three over and over again, working those chains and those single crochet stitches two, three, four. I'm just gonna get you started on this first row here. If you need to kind of pick things up a little bit, that's okay, sometimes they can get scrunched down. Work a single crochet, then one, two, three, and four. Work a single, see if you need to pick that up and to, just to see everything. Work a single crochet right into that. One, two, three, four. So I'm just repeating row three You'll be doing this for the whole thing. And you can see how the rows move on very quickly because of all the skipping that we're doing and chaining and skipping. So we're not doing anything too complicated. So it's a pretty quick moving project. We're just working that single crochet right into there. And then to finish off the row, three, four, work a single crochet at the end, that last stitch. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep on repeating row three over and over and over, and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to finish everything off. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the very end here. I'm gonna do those last four chains and single crochet right at the end there. Okay, so you'll just wanna go until it's as long as you would like it to be. And as you can see, it's a very, pretty texture that we've come up with. It almost looks like rows of treble crochet stitches or uh, double treble crochet stitches. Um, but we did this all with chains and because it's all these chains, it has a really nice drapey kind of um, fabric that we've created. So once you've made your cowl as long as you would like it to be, you can cut the yarn and fasten off. Then we're going to weave in the ends and then we'll add our buttons. So just thread your tapestry needle and then you're just gonna go in. Now this is reversible so it doesn't really matter which side you weave it into. So you can wear it any which way you like. So just come in one direction with your tail and then come back in the other direction just to kind of help lock it into place. And then you can take your scissors and just trim. Okay, and then you'll most likely have a tail at the beginning where you started, unless you wove it in as you went along, but I left mine hanging down. So you just come in one direction with the tail, same thing as before, and then just come back in the other direction. And then take your scissors, and trim. Okay, so now we're ready for the buttons. Now I wanted to point out, we can get this yarn out of the way for a moment. I wanted to point out that we just basically have this long rectangle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew two buttons on here. And these chains, in between them, there are lots and lots and lots of spaces. So this allows you to really button and customize your cowl and wear it any way you like. You can just button one button, you can button two. Uh, you can give it a twist and then button it. But these, all these in between these chains are gonna act like our buttonholes. So you really have endless possibilities to button this cowl. So what you wanna do is take a piece of matching yarn and cut about eight to 12 inches and then cut another piece about the same size. And then what you'll want to do is make sure before you begin sewing, make sure your tapestry needle can fit through the buttonholes that you'll be using. Okay, so you'll want to test out your, your needle. See this one I can't even pass through. So I do have a smaller tapestry needle and this easily passes through. So then one of the pieces of yarn that you cut, you'll want to thread your tapestry needle and then figure out where you'd like your buttons to go. I'm just gonna do mine side by side on one of the edges here. So just, just side by side. 
nothing fancy. Okay, so let's sew the first one on. And I'm just going to do, now there's, you can sew your buttons any way you like. You could do a, an X, or you can just do like two parallel lines. I'm going to do an X. I like the way that looks. Okay, so go in one way, come up the other way, and then just do that a few times just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I'm going to do this once more. And really, when you use the matching yarn like this, it looks beautiful because it matches so nicely. Okay, just go through there a few times just to get it nice and secure because you don't want your buttons to fall off. Okay, just like that, and it matches, so it looks really pretty. Okay, so then you can just tie that right on. Tie a nice secure knot. The other thing about using matching yarn when you sew your buttons is when you weave these ends in, they'll they'll blend in really nicely. We're going to weave those in in a moment. Okay, and then we'll just repeat for our other button. Okay, I'm just threading my tapestry needle, and we're just going to sew this button right on. Same thing. We'll go a few times one direction, then the other direction. We're just doing a, a little X just to stitch this button down. Okay, so once you get that one sewn, you can tie it as well. Now, alternatively, if you have a larger kind of statement button, you could put one in the middle or up in the corner and just use a one button closure for your cow. Okay, and then you'll want to weave these ends in where your button, your little tails were for your button. Okay, so I went in and wove in the ends and our buttons are finished and our cow is finished. So let's button it up and just see what everything looks like. Now you can give your cow a twist like this before you button it and it'll make a little decorative twist and it'll kind of make it lay a little bit flatter when you wear it. So we're just gonna be, again, using the spaces in between these chains to button our cowl together. And it's finished. And it's just a lightweight little summery piece that you can just throw on. It works well uh, all through spring, summer, and even into early fall. So that is how you crochet the Tiger Lily Summer Cowl. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again!